Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well. Today is a very exciting video because I, along with the rest of BookTube, it seems, I'm talking about the Booker Prize because today, Tuesday the 26th of July, they have just announced the Booker Prize long list for 2022. You should hopefully be seeing this the day after. Um, but yeah, they announced the long list, which I was very excited about. I always follow the Booker. It feels like the main, well, it is kind of, I guess, like the main book prize. Um, Obviously, they've got like the women's prize and stuff, but this is feels like for fiction books, this is a place to be. So I am going to insert a clip now of my like very quick initial reaction to reading the list at three o'clock. And then we will come back here and actually break down the list and talk about them because I think it's a really interesting list. I'm very excited about it. So, yeah, see you in a sec. OK, so the time is currently. 3.34 p.m. The Booker long list was announced at 3 p.m. But I couldn't look at it because ironically enough, I was actually in a meeting shortlisting for a different literature prize. I wasn't judging, but it's through work. So I was there. Um, so very ironic, but, and I am still at work now. So I can't, I'm gonna film, you'll have seen my introduction. I'm gonna film then me like properly going through the list, giving all my thoughts after work. But right now I need to look at it. So I had to film it because I wanted my first look. My first reaction real i'm so excited about this i don't really know why i find any kind of like list announcement really interesting just because you're like waiting for it and you're not sure what it's going to be it feels like christmas morning vibes of like oh and i don't know i like when we all can get together and talk about it well obviously books are my jam i'm really interested in the industry i'm really interested in the book it is like the big boy prize uh so i'm really excited i've been looking at everyone's predictions i didn't personally make any predictions it was interesting seeing the ones that kept coming up but then i never know if just like one person says it and everyone's like that's a good prediction because you're starting from like absolute zero baseline no one knows there's not even that many parameters of like the women's price say um so whether then those names just get repeated so like i've definitely seen some coming up like maps of our spectacular bodies the colony things like that that keep coming up which will be interesting to see but then i think you can never predict the booker because oftentimes they love to go really left field on like indie presses books never heard of or you know less we had a year where it was like a lot less literary anyway i'm really excited so yeah that's my thoughts going into it very excited to see what's on there let's the book of prize 2022 the colony okay well that was on there after sappho which i've never heard of small things like these maps of us but everybody's case study i was just about to say that the trees trust oh my god this is such an exciting such an exciting list for me um yeah running through it a lot of them familiar i've read um what have i read i've read case study by gray mccray burnett i think that's the only one i've read but okay I'll, I'll wait and then you can properly see my thing but from glancing on it i recognize a lot of them which did not happen last time i own a few of them that i've wanted to read and haven't and there's another couple that i don't own but i've really been interested to read so i'm very very excited about this list i unfortunately have to go back to my job now but i'll see you in a sec okay so i'm not sure how um articulate i was there because i was very much like there's no point me running through the whole list I'm just getting my initial reaction which as i'm sure you can see was basically pretty happy i will say i think the predictions were nailed like Almost all of the books on that list I've heard mentioned multiple times as a prediction. Move Robert Cheese Plant out of the way. I've seen almost all of those books mentioned like multiple times to be on that list. So clearly the people had it, had it good this year. And yeah, there's books I've read, there's books I own, there's books I really want to read. So I'm excited about it. I do like when the booker is loads of books you haven't heard of because I think it introduces you to books, but also it's nice to know that books you were already excited for are on there or that you already own and you're having to buy loads of books or borrow loads of books. So yeah, let's break down the list. I'm not sure what order they've ordered these in. So not in alphabetical by surname, all by first name, all by title. So the first one that we have is The Colony by Audrey McGee. So this is a book which I already own, which is really exciting. I got this book from the publisher when it came out and I've been really excited to read it, um, but I haven't read it yet. And then I actually read the first chapter in my last vlog, which was like a read, try chapter reading vlog. And it wasn't, I ended up not picking this book. Um, it was a pretty short first chapter. It gave me a flavor for it. Didn't end up reading it, but I was still like, I definitely want to read this book. And now I definitely will be because it's on the book along list. So this is an island. I love me some Irish fiction and it's set on this like remote island off the coast of Ireland. And we're following over the course of one summer two men mr masson and mr lloyd who 
decided to travel to the island to get this kind of like authentic experience um, and I believe over the course of this summer we kind of see how the people who live on this island, a rock which is three miles long and half a mile wide, have their own views of what is being recorded, what is being taken, what is given in return. Soft summer days pass and the islanders are forced to question what they value and what they desire. I've heard great, great reviews of this. Um, I know a lot of you in my comments have been saying this is brilliant. Someone also said, I think that the audio pick is good. I'll obviously be reading it physically because I have it physically. Um, but yeah, I have wanted to read this. Uh, and so I'm really, really pleased to see it on here because it gives me a push to do so. And it sounds like it could be a really me book. Irish fiction, dealing with like a remote, island set over summer an element of kind of maybe what is really going on here i'm interested i feel like this could be really me book i feel like i still don't despite having read the first chapter have like a real great grip on what it's going to be like but i'm excited to read it then we have after sappho by selby win schwartz so this is not a book that i'd heard of before seeing this it's published by galley beggar press who are an independent they published duck's new report which was on the book list i guess that is something to think about when we're thinking of these books i think you'll as a publisher you can only or like an imprint, you can only submit one book unless you've had books on the shortlist before, that kind of bumps up your numbers. So Duck's New Report was on the shortlist, I believe. And so that's really great for like an indie, if you can only choose one. But yeah, I hadn't heard about this book, but it sounds really interesting. I actually have ordered two books since just seeing this list, actually three, and this is one of them. It's a joyous reimagining of the lives of a brilliant group of feminists, sapphists, artists, and writers from the past as they battle for control over their lives for liberation and justice and it's told in a series of vignettes which i like i believe this is quite a short book and so it's like the lives of real women so we've got virginia wolf in here um josephine baker and then some women that i haven't heard of from the past apparently it's very funny i really like a book that reimagines real figures especially if there's some kind of like humor in that that kind of blurring of the lines between fact and fiction i find very interesting and i'm obviously very interested in the stories and the lives of women so i think yeah we'll see when this one arrives and when i read it but not something I'd heard of, glad to be introduced to it because it sounds very interesting to me. Next up we have Glory by No Violet Bulawayo, which is another book that I had seen predicted many times. I'm not sure if that's because Bulawayo has had a book long listed or shortlisted before or whether people just had their eye on the prize, which they really did, because yeah, I hadn't heard about this book until people started putting it in their predictions videos but it sounds very interesting if a little bit kooky so it's a novel about it says the story of an uprising told by a vivid chorus of animal voices that help us see our human world more clearly so it's set in the past it's kind of this fably mythic type type book maybe so yeah this idea of a fictional country ruled by charismatic animals um and following kind of wars and i think it's gonna be a lot about like power clearly and yeah using these animals to kind of explore those ideas not to be honest something that necessarily be drawn to i'm gonna try and read i guess a lot of these books i think because the list i like and and just because i think it's fun to kind of follow along and read the books but yeah this isn't something i would have picked up before i don't think but also not something i'm like oh i don't want to read that it feels out of my comfort zone i definitely haven't really read many books narrated by animals but i'm like middle interested in this book and although I haven't ordered it yet, I don't think I'll be rushing out to get it. I definitely want to see some people's reviews when they all start reading it. And it's one I want to get to at some point. Next up, we have a book that I was pretty sure would be on this list. Um, it's Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, which is, as you can see, a book that I own. I'm really excited about this book. The reason I say I really thought it would be on the list is because although it's been like very well reviewed generally, as I'm sure many of these books are, I've said this before when I've talked about this book, at the end of last year, I always love reading those articles which are like author's favourite books of the year and this book was overwhelmingly the one that was mentioned the most by a whole range of different like writers and thinkers and commentators this book kept coming up so it really piqued my interest because I'm like it's clearly speaking to a lot of people and potentially it's speaking to people who are themselves writers I just thought it was interesting that it came up so much and um, as you can see it's a very small book it's another piece of Irish fiction. I remember thinking like, oh, would they put both of them on? Two kind of Irish historical novels. Clearly they have. Yeah, this is actually a five-star prediction for me. We have two books on this list that are in a video that I made a couple of months ago where I picked like six five-star predictions and two of them are on this list, which is very interesting and bodes well. So yeah, I'm very excited to read it. Super, super short. Apparently it's set at Christmas, so I'm perfect to pick up at the height of summer. And it's in 1985 in an Irish town and we are in the lead up to Christmas and we're following a man called Bill Furlong, a coal and timber merchant who's kind of 
facing his busiest season going around the town as he goes around the town and sees all these people in this small town it's a lot about like memory i think and different parts of people's lives um, and i've heard it's a very moving book and very beautifully written i have read Claire Keegan before I've actually read her short stories and I loved her short stories and hadn't made the connection that it was the same author because I read those short stories it's called Walk the Blue Fields I think that book I read that at university and hadn't made the connection that this was the author of this book I kept hearing about so I was very excited when that happened um, and yeah so super super short will 100% be reading it very soon and I'm really excited about it. And then next up we have Night Crawling by Layla Motley, which is not a book that I own. However, in my mid-year book freakout tag, I spoke about two of the books on this list as books that were either released already this year or about to be released that were my most anticipated and Night Crawling was one of them. It also matches my nails today, so that's nice. This is a debut novel by an American author published by Bloomsbury and it's about a 17 year old girl who I think is living like a very deprived life in Oakland, California. Says she's determined to survive in a world that refuses to protect her. I believe she is caring for her younger brother and then basically gets caught up in something, some sort of criminal activity. And the police, when they arrest her, offer her a deal kind of in exchange for her freedom. Um, and then this deal is I think what the book centers around and, and what happens after that. It says if she agrees to testify, she could help expose the corruption of a police department but honesty comes at a price, one that could leave her family vulnerable. Yeah, I just think this sounds really, really interesting. A debut by a young woman. I think it's gonna be a lot, obviously, about power, about class, potentially about race. And yeah, it just sounds very pertinent, very timely. Hannah did say that it's like extremely harrowing, which I can imagine a young girl makes up police living a very deprived life. So it might be a bit more of a heavy one, but I'm still very, very looking forward to reading as i say it's it's been a book that i was anticipating so i was very pleased to see it on this list and it's really exciting for Layla motley because she is extremely young she was i don't even want to say this born in born in 2003 which i think is illegal um i didn't know toddlers were allowed to apply to the booker prize um yeah that means she is eight years younger than me four years younger than my sister so i believe she's like 19 that which is incredible like wow props to her. Next up is another debut novel by a young woman. Oh and great another woman who was born after me 1996. Why is the Booker Prize trying to make me feel bad about myself? This is Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. I don't own this book. Well I got a copy sent to work and I hadn't brought it home. It wasn't like top of my priorities but I was like I've kept it at work and then I tried to look for it the other day because again this is a book that kept coming up in the predictions which i think when they're predicting the debuts i'm like very even more impressed because it's not like oh it's an author who's been recognized by the prize before but anyway i left it in the office went to look for it the other day and i can't now find it and i think someone might have stolen it but i will try and hunt it down simply because if i can acquire these books for free why wouldn't i my concern about this book so this book is about a woman with cancer yeah i think that's it's quite a long book as well and that's basically the central theme of it. It's about Leah, the protagonist's story is told in part by the very thing that's killing her, a malevolent voice that wanders her systems, learning her from the inside out. The novel moves between her past and her present as we come to understand the people that have shaped her life. I'm just like, I always do this where I'm like, oh, it sounds really harrowing, it sounds really sad. And then I love harrowing and sad books. My issue with this is it feels a little bit too close to home. I believe that Maddie Mortimer has written like journalistically non-fiction pieces about her mother. Um, having cancer, I believe breast cancer, and this book is kind of inspired by that. Obviously, it's a young protagonist who has it. Um, and as someone whose mum also had breast cancer, and thankfully is fine now, it, it was just a bit, felt a bit too close to home, but I've heard the writing is absolutely amazing. The publicist who sent it to me, who I have like a great relationship with, was like, I think you'd really like this. So I definitely do want to give it a chance. Again, I might hold out a little bit longer just to hear some other people's reviews. But yeah, especially if I can find my copy, if you work with me and you stole it, I'm coming for you. I'm gonna give it a try and otherwise like young British female writer I'd be like yeah sign me up it's just that subject matter which is like a little bit more painful for me but it might be fine I'm sure it'll be fine next up is the one book on this Booker's Dozen list of 13 that I've actually read which is Case Study by Gray McRae Burnett so Gray McRae Burnett is a Scottish writer he's published by Saraband who are an independent press based in the northwest who I absolutely love um, and work with quite a bit at my day job so I'm really really pleased with Saraban and for Graham McRae Burnett he was shortlisted for his bloody project which actually I haven't read which I really should but I've read his some of his other books he does this like noir French kind of detec crimey detective series that I absolutely love and so when this book came out in October last year I got 
proof copy immediately and read it really really quickly this was an absolute five star prediction for me it was a book that i was anticipating so much it sounded so up my street because it's about set in london in the 1960s and it's about this like very famous psychologist and he's a very like controversial character and we follow a young woman whose sister has died by suicide and she believes that this collins this psychotherapist is responsible for that and so she starts going to see him and i was just like ooh, like psychotherapy like a bit of a mystery in there love his writing and at the time i think i gave this like a 3.5 i absolutely loved the first half of it and then it kind of lost me a bit towards the end but i will say that i read this book when i had a really disgusting like chest cold and like head cold and so maybe that played into it i really loved and it has been like about six months since i read it but i really loved a lot of it um but it wasn't that kind of five star prediction on first read however because this book was actually long listed for the gordon burn prize which is a prize that we administer um at my work i have been thinking about this book a lot and actually thinking oh i really want to reread it because i just do love graham mccray burnett and honestly the first half of this book i was like so hooked um so i'm really really pleased that it's on this list i obviously it's not my priority to reread when i've got like 12 books i haven't read yet but honestly i would consider rereading it especially if i think if it gets shortlisted yeah i'm really really pleased to see it on there i hope it introduces more people to Greg McRae Burnett because I love him as a writer and I do think this is such an interesting book. Next up is another book that I hadn't heard of. It is Treacle Walker by Alan Garner. So I'd heard of Alan Garner. He's a very well-established, well-respected writer. Um, but I hadn't heard about Treacle Walker. If I had seen it, not gonna lie, the cover probably would have just made it pass straight out my mind because I really dislike this cover. I'm not sure how it sounds. Like it's a pretty brief blurb. I'd never heard of it before. I don't have a huge amount to go on, but I'm not sure. It says that Joe Coppock squints at the world with his lazy eye. He reads comics, collects bird eggs, and treasures his marbles. When Treacle Walker appears off the moor one day, a wanderer, a healer, an unlikely friendship is formed, and the younger boy is introduced to a world he never could have imagined. In this playful, moving, and evocative fable set once again in his beloved Cheshire, Alan Garner delivers a stunning fusion of myth and folklore. Like, part of that appeals to me. Like, not to always hang on about the North. Did you know I'm from the North? Like nice Cheshire setting sounds like a little bit more light-hearted quite like sweet this relationship folklore blending together can really work for me um but also I just haven't heard anyone talk about it and I'm not sure exactly like how to think about it in my mind but I'm gonna try and read it as I say I want to try and read most of these and this is definitely because I kind of feel like I don't know anything about it kind of makes you want to read it more so this book is one of the few that's published in paperback I think it comes out in paperback next week so i haven't ordered it yet because you know i'm not paying for hardback if i don't have to i will probably pick it up when it comes out in paperback okay next up we have a final book that i own on this list and the other book that i said was a five star prediction for me and that is the trees by percival everett so i'm so happy to see this book on this list because i am desperate to read it again this is one that i picked up for my try chapter tag clearly my brain was like <laughs> predicting the Booker Prize. And I really, really loved the first chapter of it. But again, I was ill. Why am I always ill? I didn't feel like my brain was maybe on like top level power. Not as top level power to read, but yeah, this is kind of like a detective-y, satire novel about race in America set in Money, Mississippi, where people are dying um, and with each death, a boy who resembles a black child who was lynched years before appears. And so these detectives come into town, they're met with a lot of resistance. I've heard it gets pretty weird. I've heard tell the zombies in here, but people in my comments have said that this book was like one of the best books that they've read recently or read last year. And I, from the moment I saw it, I was like, that sounds so, so up my street. It's been a five star prediction. I'm so pleased to have an excuse to read it. Like, it's just so nice that some of the books on this list I already owned and wanted to read. So I'm very, very excited about this one and then next up the other book which is hugely anticipated for me and um, the one i mentioned in my book freak out tag as the book coming out in the second half of the year that i was most excited about and that is trust by hernan diaz so i haven't read any hernan diaz before but jaylen read trust like a couple of months ago and was like i really think you'll love it um, and then i think kieran read it and loved it this is another one that i was really hoping would be on the list that everyone seemed to think was on the list and I kept being like, request this book from the publisher before it goes on the long list. And then I didn't, so I pre-ordered it today because I'm just very, very excited to read this book. I would have read it anyway, but it's great that 
it's part of this list and will be contributing towards my project. It's about a Wall Street tycoon and the daughter of an eccentric aristocrat. And it says together they've risen to the very top, but at what cost have they acquired their immense fortune? This is the mystery at the center of this novel. So it's like a novel within the novel that all of New York seems to have read, but there are other versions of this tale of privilege and deceit. I just love a good mystery in a book. It sounds like it's loads about, yeah, power and money and a little New York potentially. I'm not sure if it's like historical at all like the actual novel the novel in the book is from 1938 but yeah i just think i'm gonna really love this book I'm really excited to try hernan diaz comes personally recommended to me just super glad that it's on this list and i pre-ordered it because it comes out next week so that's nice okay next up another book that i hadn't heard of this is the seven moons of marley almedia by shan karanatalaka not an author that i'd heard of actually although i think they are like very famous Sri Lankan author. Yeah, so he is considered one of Sri Lanka's foremost authors. And this book is set in Colombo in Sri Lanka in 1990. It follows a wall photographer, gambler, and closet queen who's woken up dead in what seems like a celestial visa office. His dismembered body is sinking into the Bira Lake and he has no idea who killed him. At a time when schools are settled by death squads, suicide bombers, and hired goons, the list of suspects is depressingly long. But even in the afterlife, time is running out for Marley. He has seven moons to try and contact the man and woman he loves most and lead them to a hidden cache of photos that will rock Sri Lanka. So again, this sounds like a very sweeping, quite an epic novel, got a little bit of a speculative or like magical element to it. Also seems to have like a mystery kind of to it. I have never, I don't believe that I've read a book set in Sri Lanka or about Sri Lanka before. So I am interested in this one. I haven't ordered it. I don't actually think it's out yet. I think it comes out. A lot of them seem to come out on the 4th of August, interestingly. So I believe this comes out next week and it's not like, oh my God, this sounds absolutely up my street because when I'm playing it safe, just being like, these are the books that are me, they are usually a little bit more realist, but that's not to say that I haven't loved books that are a lot more epic with some sort of magical. It's giving um, 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Alicia Fack in the way that we're following like someone after they died um, and kind of trying to work out what happened to them, but also looking at the relationships that were really important to them. And I nearly loved that book, wanted to, didn't quite hit the landing. So. I'm definitely gonna pick this one up when it comes out. I have a voucher actually for The Bound, which is the independent bookshop near me. And I think I might use the voucher to pick up this one. And it's got a really stunning cover. Sounds a little bit different and interesting. Definitely willing to give it a read. Then we have O oh William by Elizabeth Strout. I was so happy to see this on there because I have read one Elizabeth Strout. I read Olive Kitteridge at the end of last year and I really loved it. Like loved it so, so much. It's such a gorgeous book and I just love the way Elizabeth Strout writes. The only issue with this one, and it's an issue I have with basically all prizes, is that this is technically a companion novel. I don't know that it's a sequel or a prequel. Okay, so yeah, it is a sequel to My Name is Lucy Barton, which is like a very famous Elizabeth, Elizabeth Strout book, which again, I was kind of put off reading even post Olive Kitteridge because I think it's about death and it's very sad. And for some reason, my brain's always like, you won't want to read about people dying, even though people die and I'd say almost every book I read. My only issue is like, don't put sequels on the list because then now I have to read My Name is Lucy Barton first. And I've heard some people say that you don't have to, but like, I don't know, it just seems foolish not to. But I'm still excited because I've wanted to read more Elizabeth Strout. Um, I can see myself like absolutely loving that book because I loved Olive Kittredge so much. But yeah, I think to give a William a fair try, I need to read Lucy Barton first. So it just makes my list a bit longer, but it's a list I'm willing to do rather than like, the third book in a series I had no intention of reading anyway, that's when it annoys me more. It says, yeah, Lucy Barton is a successful writer living in New York, navigating the second half of her life as a recent widow. So it's like, okay, spoilers for the first book. But it says, a surprise encounter leads her to reconnect with William, her first husband, and longtime on again, off again friend and confidant. And yeah, I just think I love Elizabeth Strout from the one book that I've read of her. I'm super excited to read these two. Um, I'm very, very excited that it's on the list. And then finally, the one book actually that I was just a bit like, uh, which is Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. So I have read a book by Karen Joy Fowler, which is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves, which is her like super, super famous one. And I did not like it. I read it a long time ago, like, mm, I think I was probably 15, 16 when I read it, maybe a little bit older, so quite a while ago. Um, and <laughs> it's such a funny book. I talk about it quite a lot because I always say it is the best plot twist I've ever read in a book like Gone Girl Who. The more time I think about it, the more I'm like, I think everyone else knew that plot twist apart from me. But when it comes as a surprise, it really came as a surprise. Um, so I remember the book quite vividly in that respect. In fact, I was literally thinking about it yesterday because the name Fern came up and like, that's just in my brain. If you've read that book, you know, you know. But then I remember the second half of it being a bit more lackluster for me, but then also thinking about myself as a reader when I was 
15, 16, I probably did read a lot. I can imagine having read something that was more character focused and being like, that's boring. Whereas now that's not how I feel at all. And actually like, I often find myself really liking books that other people think is boring. But even without that, even being generous to Karen, this doesn't sound like a very me book. Apparently it's an epic novel about an ill-fated family of thespians, drinkers and dreamers whose most infamous son is destined to commit a terrible and violent act. To be honest, don't know what this says about me, the terrible and violent act is hooking me a bit. But yeah, it's a historical novel about this celebrated Shakespearean actor family in America in the 1890s and there's a civil war. But it says, of the six Booth siblings who survive adulthood, each has their own dreams they must fight to realise, but it's Johnny who makes a shocking decision that will change the course of history. I don't know, I'm just not that great about these like big, I was about to say like I'm not really massively into like big epic historical family stories, that's probably not even true, but this one just looks like it's a bit like fun, like about the theatre, I don't know. It's not a book that I'm rushing out to buy in hardback, maybe my voucher will stretch to two books, who can say. But yeah, they are the 13 books on the long list and on the whole, as you can tell, I'm really excited about it. I think there's a good mix of books I've never heard of, books I already wanted to read. And yeah, I think we could have a lot of fun with it. I think that the way I'm gonna do it, I think I would like to do a couple of reading vlogs maybe for this, at least for like the books that I really wanna read. Um, or I don't know, maybe I'll read them not in a vlog, but basically I'm not gonna try and do like a reading the book along list vlog because that's a lot of books and a lot of time. And I prefer to kind of split it down, but then equally maybe you can tell me people just prefer this like big fat vlog that's got everything in, but that vlog, 13 books. My vlogs with like four books are like an hour, so I don't think that'd be a good idea. So I'm thinking about maybe, maybe doing like a couple of vlogs where I read, like at the minute I've got three here, right, that I already own. Maybe I could do like four books per vlog, or even like stretching it to like five. And um, since I do have two on the way, I would like to vlog the book of reading experience in some way, I think, um, but not in like a big fat vlog, hopefully you understand why and agree with me but yeah let's hear your thoughts in the comments i'm so excited to talk to you all about this what do you think this is the fun bit about prizes thanks so much for watching this video obviously i would love if you subscribed my instagram is storygraph linked down below and i'll see you in the next one bye bye